Learn the most advanced recruiting techniques. Land the most desirable talent. Launch your company towards massive success. This is the Higher Power Radio Show with Rick Gerard. And we are on take two. Ineffective communicators <laughs> can shut down an audience in seconds, especially with nervous, outdated, or too technical t presentation styles. This translates throughout your business and can definitely kill your ability to raise funding and hire top talent. I'm Rick Gerard, and welcome to the Higher Power Radio Show. Our mission is to discuss and deconstruct insights from top performing entrepreneurs, industry experts. Every week, we uncover tested tactical solutions to solve your company's toughest hiring challenges. Today, our guest is Stephanie Paul, speaker, expert communications trainer, and CEO of Stephanie Paul, Inc. Stephanie has an expertise in working with people who have significant message that needs to be inspirationally transferred to a variety of audiences, helping clients get away from selling to more storytelling and turning facts into edutainment. All this in a professional, entertaining, funny, and unique style of coaching. Her clients have fun while being coached and ultimately learning how to communicate on a deeper, more connected, and entertaining level. Bringing a new, refreshing air to the culture of the traditional corporate boardroom. And that's like... Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, we can tell that he's reading this. He's certainly not <laughs> memorized and he did not practice. <laughs> Ouch, I did. <laughs> yeah, how about the snafu? Ooh. So she's also an uh, executive producer and, and co-organizer of TEDx, Mission Viejo. Um, Stephanie, welcome to the Higher Power Radio Show today. Well, thank you so much, Rick Gerard. <laughs> it's awesome to have you. It's exciting so, to be here. I know. Wow. So we want to. <laughs> we're going to jump right into it. Things I want to cover is is what is effective communication and why is it important to communicate your message, and how to craft an effective presentation for companies for executives that's a lot um, can we start with the first question Let, let's start with the first one okay so <laughs> let's start with the why why what? why do i need to effectively communicate uh, well um i think it's really important to be able to effectively communicate because people stop listening uh especially now um you know uh our time frame of being focused and engaged is much shorter than it used to be sure. with technology and everything you know our brains shut off a lot quicker they want an interaction they want to be stimulated they want to move around so if you're not communicating effectively you literally shut people off and they'll pick up their phone they'll start like Absolutely. thinking about what they're going to have for dinner they'll you know they'll start looking at your shoes and saying oh i don't like that guy's shoes so you know it's uh, <laughs> it's true though it's absolutely true our minds drift unless you use certain techniques um, that stimulate the brain in certain areas and you have changes like you so you switch it up a little bit because that's the neuroscience behind it absolutely okay so where do we need to start in order to be an effective communicator i think to be an effective communicator you have to start with listening absolutely mm. i um, try to let I mean, you have two ears and one mouth, and you should use it in that proportion. Yes, that's very good. I, I just Did you that. learn that in school? Oh, you just learned that now? <laughs> I Googled it earlier today. <laughs> GTS, that is fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, okay, so you need to be an effective listener. Yeah, well, 93% of how we communicate is nonverbal. Sure. And so if it's nonverbal, that means if you're not listening to your audience, because essentially, regardless of whether it's one person or a thousand people, when it's live, obviously when it's on camera, you can't see your audience because they're behind a lens. Sure. Uh, but uh, if you're not listening to your audience and watching them, you're not going to see how they're communicating back to you. Therefore, it's essentially a conversation, even sure. when you're presenting. You know, if you don't include them and interact with them in some way, obviously you've got a message you need to get across. You've got some form of uh, um, information. But if you're not listening to them your audience will actually tell you where they want you to go and what information that they, you can tell when they're bored. Like yeah, they will, you absolutely. know, so if you're not seeing when they're bored or you're not seeing when they switch off or you're not allowing them to laugh when they think something's funny and communicating with and that. And you're just blowing past it and not, mm -hmm. let, not letting them soak in the moment. Well, also then they yeah. don't feel like you're, um, you're really talking to them. Sure. It doesn't matter whether you're speaking to one person or a hundred people, you should always consider it as if you're having an intimate conversation and you're trying to affect one person um, and speak to that person to their, their heart their mind their emotions their their needs and their desires because yeah. ultimately what's in it for them right yeah well, yeah that's um 
this is great timing, by the way, for me, since I actually have a big presentation tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, so um, you need to be connected to the audience. You need to, so how do you actually listen when you're giving a talk? Or when you're giving a presentation? I think it's in the same way uh, that you do if you think about it as a conversation. Yeah. If you don't have a specific agenda, because um, gen an agenda usually means an underlying something that you're not sharing, right? Like a takeaway. Yeah. Um, okay. So if you actually, you know, you it's like you share some information, you watch how people react to it, mm -hmm. and then you react to their reaction, so to speak. It's, yeah. It's, it's like a, it moves, you know? Sure. It's a conversation. So if you think about it, okay, let's look at it from the perspective of two actors yeah. in a scene. One actor does his line and listens to the behavior of the other actor, and then the other actor delivers blah, blah, blah. And, and, and it's a behavioral exchange yeah. with acting, yeah. right? So it's the same thing with a communication with an audience. It's a behavioral exchange. When you truly are listening to them, you can fire on all cylinders, still deliver your message, and the thing, you affect them emotionally, right? Sure. So when they're emotionally charged in the same way that you're passionate about whatever it is that you're sharing – then they're more likely to remember what it is you're telling them and take it away and share it. So we mentioned in the opening, you know, uh, about how presentations can be too outdated or too technical, right? Mm -hmm. um, so how do you get away from that, especially if you're doing a presentation to raise funding or something to that effect where... Um, I've worked with a lot of clients, especially in the life sciences, um, tech industries, things like that, people who pitch to VCs. Yeah. And um, they often have very technical stuff. Yeah. Now, their audiences as VCs, because not all VCs are science-based, not all VCs are tech-based. Some VCs have just got a hell of a lot of money. Um, you know, it, and it depends on what their um, background is as to what they're really going to understand. Yeah. So when you've got a group of those people mixed into your audience who potentially might fund whatever it is that you're try you know, um, trying to create, sure. uh, you need to speak to uh, a wider audience. Now, we all have emotions, right? We yeah. all get charged up by emotions. Um, you can always give your little packet with all your science and all that sort of stuff, but it's at, for people to read afterwards, or people can ask questions afterwards. You know, the Q whole Q&A thing will come and have a meeting with you. For um, So what you really want to focus on in that 7, 10, 15, 20-minute presentation that you have is how do I charge up a bunch of VCs to get as excited about my product as I am, prove to them that it works, and get them more interested to ask questions. Because so ultimately in that scenario, you want people to be like, hey, what about this? What about this? Even challenging you yeah. to say, well, I know this A, B, and C uh, over here. So that, that starts conversation. Yeah, so essentially you're enticing them to go into mm -hmm. due diligence so that you, know, you can effectively get funded by them at some point. Yeah, it's kind of like an yeah. emotional commercial, if that makes any sense on a layman level. Do you, do you find that um, some CEOs do better because of their presentations are stronger in raising capital? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've had the fortunate um, ability. Now, I can't say it was all because of me, but I have had people go to raise a certain amount of money and raise above that. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So um, whether I had a hand in that or not, I don't know, but uh, they You can pat yourself on the back. It's yeah, okay. yeah. It well, works. you know, they've, they've hired me again multiple times after the fact and uh, referred me to other VCs, and I've worked with other people because of those scenarios. Awesome. So um, what components do you think make a great presentation? Um, there's a few. Um, uh, it's, well, if you're talking about having a presentation where you've got slides, your slides need to support your message, not be necessarily part of it, if that sure. makes any sense. So if you have imagery, um, you want your images to be really bold, uh, really bright, and really emotionally driven sure. to match whatever it is you're saying. You also want them to be salient. Now, salient means that uh, you know you have a bold message that's maybe the 10% of your message that you really want people to take away. Sure. Um, we're just using 10% because it's a nice number, you know, because they're not going to remember 90%. They're only going to remember maybe 10, 12, 15. There's no specific statistic that says really? exactly. So, like, when you give a talk, you're really only going to try to get them to retain 10 percent yeah that would be nice that would be a, you know a, and if it's you can a, keep them yeah long. if you can keep them that long yeah. but you also want to whatever that 10 percent is you want to repeat it in multiple different ways um because other people have different ways that they learn some are audible some are visual yeah. um some you know but we're all emotional in the way we remember stuff 
So that 10%, if you're, if you're very creative and clever, you can filter it through that you say it multiple different ways throughout the presentation. So it doesn't become boring like you're saying, the dog walked down the street yeah. ten, you know, 10 times throughout the presentation. That's too literal. Um, and then uh, get creative with, you know, you can use things like music. Uh, uh, stimulate them with humor. Appropriate planned humor is sure. exceptionally good. Um, people say to me all the time, like, I'm not funny. How do you make people funny? And this is my belief and my experience. Is and you do have a lot of experience with this because <laughs> you're also a comedian. At yeah, I did point, right? comedy for 10 years. Yeah. but And I still write for my clients comedy and, 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 you know, I still teach and coach in a comedic way. Nice. Because it gets people laughing and it relaxes them. You make me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm also a laughter yoga coach and trainer, so we, that's a whole new story. But yeah, let me finish totally. answering. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I derailed you. Where were we? Uh, wait a minute. We're, we're talking about the 10%. Um, yeah, so appropriate planned humor. Mm -hmm. uh, then I also mentioned that people <clears throat> think that they're not funny, but my belief is you are the funniest person you know because there's not one person that's listening on this radio station right now who has not at some point made a friend, a neighbor, a family member, laugh yeah. we 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 laugh 86 six percent of what we laugh at is just communication it's just it's just the common denominator the elephant in the room the yeah. i've experienced the same thing as you've experienced like oh yeah i know about the weather the irony, you know yeah. so um in in a lot of the techniques um that comedians use are really simple they're really simple and if you're willing to go there and use them it's uh, um, i'm it's amazing what people can do with their own humor inside their own presentation okay well, we're going to have to take a quick break. We're, we're, um, I'm getting Paul, the engineer who started us late, by the way, for all our listeners. Uh, it's Paul's fault, not Stephanie Paul, Paul Roberts. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> we're talking to Stephanie Paul, communications trainer extraordinaire and CEO of Stephanie Paul, Inc. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about how to actually put all this together. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. We'll be right back. You're listening to Higher Power with Rick Gerard, giving you access to recruiting techniques that will help you hire key talent to build your company towards real success. Rick is a recruiting executive and entrepreneur who's been successfully recruiting in the aggressive Silicon Valley technology landscape for the past two decades. After a very successful stint at Apogee, he founded Stride Search in 2012. Based on a lean efficiency model, Stride has uniquely positioned itself as a leader in retained search for the most critical talent hires within a small organization. Whether you're a startup executive or recruiting professional, by listening to Higher Power with Rick Gerard, you will walk away with skills to help you attract and hire great talent. Now back to Higher Power with Rick Gerard. Welcome back to the Higher Power Radio Show. I'm your host, Rick Gerard, and today our guest is the amazing Stephanie Paul, speaker, trainer, and CEO of Stephanie Paul, Inc. <laughs> Before the break, <laughs> we laughed quite a bit. Um, we discussed the importance uh, of, and the elements that make a great presentation. Uh, we're going to continue with that, and then we're going to talk a little bit about how to put it all together for you. So we talked about the slides and the story. Uh, next piece would be delivery, right? I guess so, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and I just want to uh, reiterate on the story aspect of it. A story doesn't necessarily mean once upon a time and all the details. It, you can tell a story in a sentence. Yeah. So it's just uh, what is the story that you need to tell and how is it emotionally delivered um, so that people can get excited about that story, yeah. whatever that is. Um, and the delivery is really about pacing, pitch, learning pausing and timing and things like that, um, how to uh, combat nervousness um, and stay mindful of being in the moment versus like in your head with the script. Like I've had, literally had clients where I watch them go from their presentation to into the, their head where they're reading their script because that's where they've <laughs> memorized it. Yeah. And I'll say to them, are you reading your, I'll stop them in the middle of rehearsal. Are you reading your script right now? And they're like, what are you talking about? I don't have my script in front of me. I'm like, no, it's in your head. And it, cause we memorize visually, yeah. we, everything we memorize is visually, yeah. but they happen to have visualized it in their head. And they're like, yeah, how, do you, how could you see that? Because <laughs> I read behavior for a living. It's, <laughs> it's what I do. Mm -hmm. All right. So from delivery. Um, uh, okay. So Practice. Delivery, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I would imagine repetition and delivery uh, is key. Mm -hmm. So how long does it take for somebody to actually uh, internalize 
the content that they need to deliver? I think it depends on the person. Mm -hmm. There are several different types of techniques that you can use. Um, uh, like you could even just Google memorization techniques. Um, there's like about five different like ones out there, but all of them involve some form of um, visual imagery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, some of it's uh, sound music, whatever that mm -hmm. is. Uh, I think that the easiest way for me is when you add your own story and your own imagery to it. It doesn't actually have to make sense. We c I mean, I could go into this and talk about this for an hour, but I don't want to get too deep in, yeah. in the weeds of it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, practice is important. And figuring out what the, what are the key things that you need to hit. Um, so in your brain, you want to bullet point those and you want to memorize those. Got it. Uh, you can ad lib somewhat. It's really important that if you have a time uh, restriction, because if you um, uh, are respectful of the time, you're respectful of your audience. If your audience know that you're doing a 15-minute presentation, then you better well be doing a 14-minute presentation because yeah. you give at least a minute for their reaction, their laughter, whatever that is. Got it. Um, and you're very respectful. When people run over, every, everybody does this. Oh. Unless you're phenomenal. If you're phenomenal, then, yeah, people don't mind so much. But how do we know? Like, Got that we're going to be phenomenal. Exactly. So um, practicing with a timer on always so that you learn to clock yourself with time. And it is actually something that you will learn over time. Like, that's why stand-up comedians can go, oh, you want me to do five minutes? Get up and do five minutes and get in now there. And they don't even necessarily have to look at their watch. They know what five minutes feels like. Really? So okay. um, all those kind of little tricks can um, mm. really help with delivery. And, and – and just practice on the things that you know you're bad at. So the things that you have to drop, a lot of people say, um, and ah, and so. So, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, it's like, what, what's the so there I for? had an um problem for a long time. I think I've broken it a bit. Mm -hmm. If you're aware of it, you but, can get um, rid of it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so any other components? Um, I think you mentioned emotional content. Emotional and content, yeah. Um, as well. And... And you also, if you expect your audience to get emotionally charged, you have to be there 100% yourself. Yeah. Um, that's where mirror neurons come into play. W you know, mirror neurons is like whatever's firing in your head is going to fire in your audience. Got if it. you get, if you are fully connected to what it is that you want to fire, does okay. that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know, the emotional content piece, I think too, is very transferable, especially when you're presenting or. I'm going to rope this back into what we do. It, this is a show about hiring and finding talent. If you emotionally engage the person that you're trying to recruit and hire, mm. uh, you have a much greater uh, chance of getting that person to join your company mm -hmm. than you do if you just kind of uh, question it, like interview them and, and question the whole time, right? Oh, there's nothing worse than the uh, job interview uh, situation yeah. where there's a panel of people sitting opposite you and you're sitting there and, you know, it's like – that desk is in between, you know, like oh that's yeah. just an awful situation. Well, that was the, back in 1920, I think yeah. that one is. But I don't know. They, they I've never been. A little bit. <laughs> I, I think I've only interviewed for a job once in my life, but you see, you're auditioned. Lucky. No, I've auditioned a yeah. lot. Yeah. That's the same thing, though. But an interview is an audition, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the way I think of it as well. Mm. All right, so you have a process, right, in which you train people to give a great presentation? Mm hmm. Can you? Can I share, Can that process? share that process with our audience? Well, um, it's a little bit different for each individual or each team that I work with. Okay. Uh, it depends on where they're at. Sure. Um, so I, uh, I'll speak in front of a large audience, but I won't train a team more than 20 people at a time, 20 or less. Okay. Um, because I don't feel that they have a strong takeaway. I think ethically on my part, if uh, I can't engage them and elevate them very quickly, then um, – it, I, I haven't done my job. Yeah. So more than 20 people is a, is a, is a tough is a tough <coughs> call to get that elevation to happen in a short space of time of like one or two days training. Got it. Uh, so what I normally do is uh, I always interview. Um, I interview people on the phone. I just get a sense of their personality. I like to know who's coming into the room. I like to know who I'm going to be working with, um, what their fears are, where they think they, they, uh, their strengths are, their weaknesses. It's kind of like doing a job interview. Yeah, it's, totally. It's, it's exactly like what you do. You're auditioning them. But I'm auditioning them, but they're coming in to be my client. Yeah. Um, 
what I find um, about that is, is uh, it was incredibly frustrating for me uh, as an actor and every time I went to do a training or something like that where we wasted the first hour of the class getting to know each other. Oh God. And that's just a waste of time to me. I want to get in there and I want to learn and I want to whatever. So that interview process happens outside the training room. Sure. Uh, and then inside the training room, I already have everybody on point, you know point with are. me. They're eating out of the palm of my hand, so to speak. Yeah. No, because we've talked, they're comfortable with me because they're about to go into a space where they have to be vulnerable. Yeah. And, you know, especially when you're talking with, um, tech people, geeks, you know, science people, stuff like that. You know, Being vulnerable is very uncomfortable. Very, very uncomfortable yeah. for those guys. But once yeah. they have a bit of a joke with me, they find out that I'm not like, uh, you know, I'm not going to be like tearing them down and stripping them apart. And Well, I sort of am, but at least they're comfortable <laughs> with it. But you know, well, you're doing it in a very nice way. I do it in a very, I, yeah. I, you know, they get to laugh at themselves and, they, and it, it, when people can laugh at themselves, they're much more open about figuring out what that, that, strong part of them is I'm very good at reaching in and pulling out your best attributes as a presenter and Got knowing it. what works for you and what you should like yeah, stay away from that <laughs> you should not do comedy <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh what is the process that you run like what, what would be your typical process that you could you could give to our audience that that maybe would help them to structure or put together a presentation if they well, let's, let's just say, because I don't know what each audience member individually is, is wanting to sure. do, so let's not talk about teams that I work with. Let's okay. talk more about an individual. If you have a presentation and you need to put it together, first of all, you have to figure out what's your objective. Mm -hmm. What is the ultimate takeaway that you want um, your audience to take away? What is maybe the three things that at the end of it you want them to be absolutely 100% clear on and go, okay, this is what I'm working on. So is that a call to action? Is that um, something that uh, that's a strong memory that makes them want to buy? Well, you know, I'm not. I don't get yeah. into the sales thing. I'm not a salesperson. Yeah. But um, so, what is a, the ultimate goal of the presentation? And then sort of backtrack it to, well, what is your top ten percent that you need to repeat through the presentation so that yeah. it comes back and you do it in a different way and so that the message comes across a, s a different stimuli. You know. Well, there's typically a trend too where uh, basically it's more of an education based presentation as opposed to a sales-based presentation mm, these days, right? Yeah, those salespeople, uh, they're like, just like, hey, raise your hand, and now you want to buy from me, and da, 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 raise yeah. your hand. It's like, ooh. Yeah, people people run from that. These yeah, days. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. But there's a lot of people still out there doing it, you know, oh, yeah. that 20-year-old that presentation style. Um, yeah, you, <laughs> you, want, you want to give a gift to your audience. I mean, yeah. like, you know, the whole TED branding and TED format, they, they talk about the gift. What is that diamond, that gift that you want to give to the audience? Yeah. Um, so I think that that's really key. Then um, f writing out, like there's a great w um, website, it's called Words to Minutes, I think it is, online, where you can actually, if you've got 15 minutes that you need to say, then, you know, figure out how many words that is. I think 15 minutes is about 15, no, I mean, sorry, I mean, about 2,000 words, I think is 15 minutes oh, really? off the top of my head. But, you know, figure out what that is, and then you want to cut it down. Um, so, and then you want to rehearse it with your time clock. Um and figure out that you're hitting that, that section, you know, like I said, you want to come in 13 and a half, 14 minutes if you're doing a 15 minute presentation. Okay. And, um, and then you want to match your images up with your presentation or your videos or whatever that is. So your audience cannot multitask. They cannot listen to you and look at something at the same time. If you want them to read something, well then read it along with them. Got it. A good interaction is having whatever it is, is having that in front of them and then getting them to read with you. Getting someone from the audience to so read it out. So giving a handout or something. Yeah. Can, yeah. Or, or what it, or I mean, as long as it's conducive. That engages them. Yeah, as long as it's conducive with what you're doing. Sure. But there are, there are lots of different things that, that you can get the audience to engage with you so that you're not just talking at them. Okay. So there, there can be physical things, there can be you know, answering questions questions, raise your hand, blah, 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 all, all that kind of stuff so that uh, you have different stimuli throughout the presentation. You've got different imagery that supports what you're saying that, that drives emotion. Yeah. Um, make sure that it's not specific, that you leave it open enough so that they are allowed to have their own interpretation of what it is that you're showing them versus like, you know, the Nazi style of this is mandatory, you must feel and think this way. Because <laughs> however you show, if you say this is my story and you show your story and you do it in a clever way, then the audience will see themselves in that story because, oh, they've probably had some form of experience that they can attach to it Got in it. their own life. Got it. And that's where the emotional connection starts happening. So when you're, when you're forming that emotional 
connection? Are you kind of using shock and awe type? Depends on what your content Dep is, but yeah. yeah, it changes. Okay. Well, uh, let's just think of it in terms of uh, presenting to a VC, mm -hmm. right? What would you be can't get You can't get too emotional. And you yeah. You, you have to be able it's to... It's a different type of presentation. Yeah, it's a d it's and, and the emotions are there, um, but uh, obviously you can't get too bleeding heart. The you know, violins come out and everybody's like, oh my God, because <laughs> VCs are just going to go, what is this BS? Yeah. Uh, but you do have to have an emotional component in there because especially, uh, especially with, like, let's say, the medical field. Everyone in the world has had a um, an experience pretty much. If yeah. you haven't, you're going to with cancer. Like, it's... It's kind of every, everyone yeah. has some form of connection to that. Oh yeah. So that's what you're talking about is that, that those that your audience can sort of connect to their experience somehow. Um, so let's say you're selling uh, your, your your product is something to do with cancer or you know research cancer and development. I, you know anything. Yeah. yeah. So you know you have to figure out what that is, but on a very um, sort of corporate level, without you. Know, but it still has to be there. It can't yeah. be too cold. It can't be too presentation style there still has to be so it's it's a delicate game especially with, with, with vcs anyway. sure i i would imagine that the emotional part that they really want to see from a vc perspective is your passion mm. for what you're the, doing exactly that's more what you drive yeah so you're you know in your passion and your and really your ability to follow through and make this thing you know yeah. give them a return on their investment Exactly. Give us the stats. Show us what you're doing. And if you're not passionate about it, why should I be? And that's, but that's any audience. Yeah. If you're not emotionally connected and driven and passionate and, you know, focus, like, like if you're just kind of delivering monotone and kind of like, blah, 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 why should I get, like I why should I get excited? Like I do. Yeah. No, you know, you're not, you're not that bad. Gosh. I know. I know. I need some coaching. So, um, <laughs> so let's give, let's give. Let's, let's kind of pull out the, the key takeaways that we can kind of give our audience to that really, I know that we're kind of, we're, we're giving a lot of information in a short amount of time. Yeah. But, um, so understanding your stimulus. I'm, stimulus I'm, value, yeah. Yeah, your value. So. What's that? What is that? What is your stimulus value? <laughs> no, it's got nothing to do with something you buy from a store. Um, <laughs> it's. <laughs> I know wow. there are some people whose brains went that direction. Um, no, stimulus value is a psychology term, and it basically means how do you stimulate me and I decide what your value is. In yeah. layman's terms, it's how do you judge me, um, you know, or how do I judge you based on what I see before me. Sure. Um, and then what's in it for me is the value part yeah. of it. So a lot of people I find, a um, substantial amount of people that I work with, don't really understand how an audience sees them or how they come across. Yeah. Um, so I think it's really important that that's something that people uh, have to open up and be vulnerable to because sometimes a lot of people don't come across well, we the way. we don't want to know, really. But uh, if you I don't mean, know how you come across, then you're going to be a bad communicator. I totally stop. agree with you. But yeah. I, think, I think there's, you know, you don't want to know that people think bad of you in some sort of way it just as most people especially c-suite executives most of the staff will lie to them about how bad they are yeah um so <laughs> it's it, so that's why peer yeah. groups like critical mass are fantastic because your peers will tell you the truth you hear that rick franzi a plug for you on my show <laughs> <laughs> no but that's that's yeah. why peer groups are great because you're there with your own your own level c-suite execs whatever that is yeah. and uh you know they'll give you the honest feedback that you need and, you know, if you want to improve, then you have to hear that. And that might be your physical appearance, the way you talk to people, the way you sort of some, – some people can come across, you know, kind of scary. And yeah. if they come across kind of scary, it, not everybody's going to want to tell them, you know, you come across kind of scary. Yeah. yeah. Or you don't come across empathetic or yeah. whatever that is. Exactly. But that is a very key component to becoming a great presenter is really understanding – how do people see, perceive, and understand you when you walk in a room? Not when you start speaking, but when you walk into a room. Ooh. So that, that pre that's all nonverbal communication mm -hmm. right there, mm -hmm. how you walk into the room. Mm -hmm. So if you kind of had your shoulders and head down and you walk into a room like you're not a presence, then people are going to put you in that category. Especially if you're giving a presentation. <laughs> yeah. the, the, b the start of your presentation <laughs> is the moment before. Yeah. It's not the presentation. It's not even walking on stage. It's the moment before. You need to be 100% on before you even walk into the room or get on stage. And there's a whole preparation aspect of what, how that is and what you need to do for the moment before. All right. And that's, that's going to probably be content for another show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm getting the wrap it up from Paul over here. 
So we're just that about uh, we're just about out of time for today. Should you got me all flabbergasted. What? Because I'm thinking about all this stuff. You've got me all psyched up. Okay. Um, so, Stephanie, thanks again for your time investment thanks here on the Higher Power Radio Show today, and welcome to the R Higher Power Radio Show community. Yay! Yay! Now, um, I am sure that some of our listeners are going to want to reach out to you for your expertise. Mm -hmm. How do they reach you and find out more? Um, you know, the best way to reach me is probably uh, um, SCP at Advance Your, which is dot org um that's switching over to stephanie paul inc because i just got my trademark so nice. um everything's switching over but if you google uh stephanie paul literally and my spell, spell stephanie paul if you could s-t-e-p-h-a-n-i-e-p-a-u-l wow um and she rolls into sexy voice yeah uh, yeah with an american <laughs> accent of course um wow <laughs> No, if you Google Impressive. that, um, uh, my LinkedIn will pop up, my Facebook will pop up. Um, my website is being built right now, which is stephaniepaulinc.com. Uh, okay. So, uh, but you can get my bio on there. It is live. It has something up there, but we just haven't finished building it yet because there's a lot of video content going in there. Yeah, and I highly recommend, Stephanie, if you need coaching for presentations, I would reach out to her. If you guys don't, you're silly. <laughs> so I um, want to thank our listening audience for tuning in to this week's episode of Higher Power. A quick thanks to our team, our engineer, Paul Roberts. He needs a couple of claps today. Um, our producers, Andrea Ballin, Shanti Ryle, and our executive producer, Kim Iverson. To listen to this show and any past episodes, you can check us out at Hire, that's H-I-R-E, PowerRadio.com, or Higher Power Radio on iTunes. Follow us on LinkedIn or Facebook at Higher Power Radio Show, or you can follow me on Twitter at Rick underscore Gerard. So we have another great show lined up for you guys next week. Our guest will be Brian Anderson, the founder and CEO of Telecomprehensive Solutions. I'm your host, Rick Gerard, and you have been listening to the Higher Power Radio Show. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you for <laughs> listening to Higher Power with Rick Gerard on OC Talk Radio.